Hi everyone, my name is Liu Han. Today I want to talk about the Apache Sky working with native EPTF agent. Before we start, I want to introduce myself. My name is Liu Han. I'm a PMC member and a committer of the Apache Sky working. I'm an engineer at the trade, which is a service mesh vendor. I have involved in the stability platform development. Also, I used to be an engineer at DD, which is a test company. I have involved in the street test platform development. This is my agenda for this talk. I have divided into four sections. The first one, what is eBPF? The second, the sky working with the native EPF agent. The third one, I want to bring a demo which contains how to use the sky working with EPF agent to do the CPU profiling. The fourth, I want to talk about what can we do in the future. Okay, let's restart. The first section is what is EPF? eBPF is a framework. You can customize a eBPF program and run it in the kernel. In this diagram, you can see there have a process is execute the Cisco method. When the needs aware the invoke, it will first execute the custom EPF program. And the real Cisco method will be executed after the EPF program execute finish. In this EPI program, we can use the helper functions to get the information of the process or kernel. And we can use a map structure to storage the message or send it to the user space program. The EPI program are event driven and the links have already predefined a lot of events. It could be executed when the links kernel or the application pass a certain full point. It almost can be executed in anywhere. When a method of user process is executing, we can create a user prop and attach a EPI program. When a kernel method is executing, we can create a kernel prop and attach EPI program. Even we can attach the EPI program when the network hardware is executing. ECC is a framework based on the EPF. It provides survival type of tracing tools which including application Cisco list kernel method. For example, when an application occupies too many memory, then we can use the OM queues to monitor which process is out of memory. According to these existing tools, we can learn that an API program can capture the situation based on the kernel events and is programmable. When we want to use the API program to monitor the system or process, we need to follow in these steps. First, we need to develop the API program based on C language. Then we can use the C language to compare it as a bytecode, which contains two parts. The program will be executed when the event is triggered, and the maps will be used to store the data, and it will be interrupted with user space or kernel space program. After compare the EPF code, we should use the BPF library to load it into the Linux kernel. In the Linux kernel, the BPF program will be verified to present crashed during the exception in EPF, such as out of bound check, size creation memory size check. If the program verifies success, the things will be compare the BPF as a metric code and attach it into the event. This is the whole process of the PPF program from develop and load it into the list kernel. So why we need it? I have some of these four points. The first one, there are a lot of events in the links. We can attach the API program almost anywhere. This gives us a more complete picture of the links. The second, the API program can be dynamic attached to the links events. That means you can open or close the API program at any time. 
Also, if you want to monitor your program through EPF, usually your program doesn't need to do any changes. The third, the EPF program are executed in the Linux kernel. Also, you cannot call Linux kernel functions, but the API provides a stable API to get all the information. And you can use it to instance the kernel without changing the kernel source code or local modules. The first, traditional agent-based service usually only can be a user-space data. Well, API program not only can be used to observe user-space data, but also can observe the kernel-space data. And, this type, and these two types of data are related. This makes the opposite data more comprehensive and much more for locating where the problem is. So based on these four points, I think it's a good thing to introduce the EPF into the observability. OK, let's talk about the sky working with the native EPF agent. Skywalking is an APM system. This is the architecture of the Skywalking. You can see the Skywalking could receive four types of the observed data, including tracing metrics, logs, and events. This data could be came from the browser agent, Istio Mesh, and Kubernetes. When the Skywalking backend receives this data, it will be aggregated and stored. At the same time, the Skywalking also provides UI and CLI to query the aggregate data. Also, the Skywalking can customize the alarm room to send alert when the alarm rules are met. Based on the Skywalking architecture, if you want to add EPF into the Skywalking, then we can create a new agent and let it communicate with the Skywalking backend. So we create a new project called Skywalk Rover that can collect metrics and analyze process and the kernel. This is architecture of the Skywalk Rover, which is deployed on the each host and scan the process in the host according to the rules. Skywalking interact with the Skywalk backend to exchange data through gRPC protocol. If you are familiar with the Skywalking, you will know that they have three entity concepts in the sky working. The service represents a set of workload that provides the same behavior for common request. The service instance represents the instance under a service, such as a pod in the Kubernetes. But if EPF is introduced into the sky working, there will have one problem. The service instance cannot be represented as a process. Because the service instance is a virtual concept, just like the pod contains multiple containers in the sky in the Kubernetes. And each containers may have one or more process. So we decide at a new process concept under the service instance. One process entity represents a real process. For now, CPU profiling is one of the features implied in the Skywalking Rover. It can be dump thread step of the process based on the circles and events, and generates the flame graph through aggregate the sampling data. The flame graph is composed of the thread step under the same process. You can visual which step have the performance issues. For the CPU profiling, we have two types. So on CPU means rest thread are spending times running on CPU, typically used to locate which method causing the high CPU usage in process. The so off CPU means where time is spent waiting while blocking on I.O., logs, timers, pagings, and the swappings. Typically used to locate which method causing high CPU load, high disk write. Next, I will explain how to make on CPU and uh, off CPU profiling works. In this diagram, we divide the process and the kernel space into two parts. When a process executes a syscall, the kernel will execute a syscall method. When the kernel needs 
contact switching. It will block the current stress execution until the wake up. The on CPU profiling will predictly dump the stress depth of the process and the kernel, while the process and kernel is executing on the CPU. Since the execute time of the kernel is usually short, so on CPU profiling is focused on the thread step of the process. The so off CPU profiling is often the thread step of the process and kernel through the context switch event, not predictably. If a thread is switching out of the CPU, that means this thread is blocked. And when the thread resumes execution on the CPU, we consider its complete one time of the context switch. Based on this 30, we can count the number and time of the context switch. After that, we can aggregate two types of the flame graphs. One is based on the time of the context switch. This could help us to locate which method is generated more complex context switch. The another one is based on the time consuming of the context switch, which can help us to analyze which method caused the program stop execution for a long time. When we use EPF to collect the thread stack data, we still need to convert it as a symbol that we can understand. As shown in the figure, using EPF, the stack element address can be obtained. We need to convert the address to a symbol using the symbol table of the process. The symbol table is usually generated when compare the binary file of the program, which can be verified by the object dump command. For the generation of the symbol table, I will explain more in the next section. Once we have the symbol tables, we can map the symbol table and the stack element address into the stack that we can understand. In the previous version of the skywalking, we release a feature called trace profiling. So what's the difference between trace profiling and API profiling? I sum up the following points. For the correlation, the trace profiling is read a single trace, or you could say that the trace profiling result is only related a uh, one request. The API profiling will dump all matrix rules threads in the process, such as on the CPU, will dump all threads uh, executing on the CPU. For the language support, the trace profiling support program that must be installed the Skywalking agent and only support Java and Python language. The API profiling don't require to install Skywalking agent and it's for C, C++, Golang, and Rust language. For the threading modules, the trace profiling only associate with a single thread, but the API profiling can be associated with multiple thread. It's similar to the first point. For the sampling, the trace profiling only supports sampling data with frequency, but the API profiling could sampling data with frequency or event. It depends on the type of the API profiling. For example, the on CPU profiling is frequency based, and the off CPU profiling is event based. For the content of the profiling, the trace profiling is only could obtain the user space stack, but the API profiling could obtain the user space and the kernel space thread stacks. Usually, the thread stack of the user space is enough to resolve common problem. But when some problem that user space step cannot be handled, the kernel space step is become very important. For the data combiner, trace profiling cannot aggregate multiple trace currently, but API profiling can not only aggregate the current process, but also can aggregate all process under the same service. For the required version of the skywalking, the trace profiling required version 7, the API profiling required version 9.1.0. Okay, in this section, I will bring a demo of the CPU profiling. 
I will take you step by step from deploying your application to analyze the on-CPU profiling result. I will split the following parts to the demonstrate. The first one, I will create a Golang application and deploy in a Linux machine. Second, I will show you how to specify rules to let the scavenging rover find the application process. Third, I will demonstrate how to trigger the on-CPU profiling and display the flame graph in the UI. In the left diagram, I have read a simple Golang program, which is port or HTTP port. When the request comes, it will call the square root in an infinite loop to occupy a single CPU resource. In the right diagram, I have built this program as a binary files, deploy in the machine and trigger the request for the number calculation. Then you can see that this program almost occupies a single core CPU. Do you still remember I have mentioned the symbol tables in the last section? In the left diagram, I have built the application with all symbol tables. Then I use the object dump command to query the symbol tables in the binary file. The result shows there is no symbol tables. At this time, CPU profiling cannot be triggered because even the profiling is performed on the application, we still cannot resolve the symbol address in the thread stack. So we cannot perform this type of application. In the right diagram, we can see there have symbol tables in the application. So this type of the application can be profiling. After we deploy the application, we need to confirm how to let the skywalking rover find the process. We have three ways. In the left diagram, we can use in the regex to match the process by command line. This is similar how we use grab command to find the process. Then you need to provide the service, service instance, process name of the process. You can use the template to render the name from the environment. It's used to match the concept with the skywalking. In the right side, you can use the agent sensor to let the skywalking detect the process automatically. It's need your application already install the skywalking agent. We only support the Golang agent currently. The third way to find process relies on the Kubernetes environment. When you deploy the Skywalking rover into the Kubernetes as a demon site and active the Kubernetes finder, it will automatically detect process under the pods. In this diagram, you can see the Skywalking rover will automatically identify the process in the Istio and upload it to the core corresponds entity in the skywalking. After finish the process finding rule, you just need to deploy the skywalking rover into your machine or Kubernetes. After all services are deployed to seed, you just need to create an on-CPU profiling task in the UI. The profiling task can only be associated with process under the same service. This diagram shows the data requires when create the profiling task. The labels means the profiling task only profile the process that contains the specific labels. The target type means what type of the profiling do you want. Now we are support on CPU and off CPU. For the demo, we choose the on CPU. The monitor time means when you want to start profiling the process. It can be start profiling immediately or a specific time in the future. The monitor duration means how long do you want profiling tests to keep profiling. After the profiling task is created and wait for a short time, you can see the flame graph of the task is shown in this page. In this flame graph, you can see that the my.hello method takes a long time. 
This method is where the squash root function is queued in the application. When we use the mouse to flow in the frame graph, you can see the proportion of the symbol in the frame graph. It will help us to know which method could be optimized. That's all of the, this demo. In this section, I will explain what new feature I will add to the Skywalking Rover. The first of all, I want to provide more type of profiling tasks. Memory profiling can help us to analyze which method will need to create more memory space. Disk I.O. profiling can help us to analyze which method needs more disk read or write, or the duration of the disk read or write. The second one is introduce the continuous profiling. If the task can only be created manually, you may miss the problem at that time. So we need a mechanism to automatically trigger the profiling test to preserve the environment at that time. And really, it's only need to configure some threshold. When the threshold are reached, the test can be automatically start and stop. The last one is, I think we can use profiling to do more things. Not only using the profiling to generate the flame graph, such as we can build the topology of process relation based on the monitor the network, or we can collect more metrics using EDPF. Okay, that's all my talk today. Thank you for watching. If you have any question, you're welcome to contact me through the following contact informations.